Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker-puffed wheat and Quaker-puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King, on your huskies. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. When you get up in the morning, there's nothing like a breakfast you really go for. Like, for instance, delicious Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice with milk or cream and fruit. These giant ready-to-serve grains of wheat or rice are premium grains. They're shot from guns, puffed to perfection, exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Shot through and through with swell nut-like flavor, too. Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice is good for you, too. Makes a swell summer's breakfast for the whole family. And served in a jiffy. So from now on, enjoy this summer breakfast treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. It was just before the spring thaw when Sergeant Preston and King moved along the frozen trail a few miles from Selkirk. When they reached a small cabin on the trail, Sergeant Preston stopped the team. Oh, King! Oh, yeah. Bobby Small is going to be surprised with the birthday present we've brought him, isn't he, fella? Come along, King. We'll take it in to him. Sergeant Preston and King. Come in out of the cold. Thanks, Ned. One King. Hello, Sergeant. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too, Susie. Where's Bobby? Oh, he's in the other room. I'll call him. Bobby? Sergeant Preston and King are here. They are? Oh, golly. Hi, Sergeant. Hi, Bobby. Hello, King. <laughs> I was hoping you'd get here before my birthday was over. You said you would. I'm nine today. King sure is glad to see you, Bobby. Gosh, I wish King could stay here all the time. Well, King and I have work to do together. But maybe this will take King's place, Bobby. Happy birthday. Golly, I was wondering what that covered basket was for. It's your birthday present from King and me. Here, take it. See what's in it. <coughs> I'll put it on the floor and then I'm covered. <laughs> King's as anxious as I am to have the cover off. Well, so am I, Bobby. Hurry up. I'm dying to see what it is. All right. All right. Oh, look. What is it? A puppy. A pure white puppy. May I take him out? May I, Sergeant? Of course. It's time he woke up anyway. All he does is sleep. I'll lift him out. Come on, puppy. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that the cutest dog, Ned? Look at him licking Bobby's face. <laughs> yeah, and look at King watching. Uh, did you thank Sergeant Preston, Bobby? Oh, I forgot. Thanks a lot, Sergeant. Does he have a name? Does he? Why, not yet. He's your dog, so you name him. Then I'm going to call him Whitey. That's it, Whitey. Oh, that's a fine name, Bobby. <laughs> yes, it is. And now it's up to you, Bobby, to take good care of Whitey. Oh, golly, I sure will, Sergeant. I'm sure you will. <laughs> How are things going, Ned? Getting anything from your claim? A little. Not much, though. I borrowed from Mr. Mallon, the Selkirk banker, to tide us over until after the thaw. Working conditions will be better then, and I'm sure we'll get a lot more from the plane. I hope so, Ned. Well, King and I better get along. I want to go on into Selkirk before supper time. Oh, I was hoping you could stay a while. Yeah, so was I. Well, I have to go on through to Dawson. It's a long trip. King and I'll be back this way in two or three months. We'll see you then. Three months went by. The thaw had come, and the spring was giving way to summer. The pup, Whitey, had grown into a beautiful, fluffy dog, and he and Bobby were inseparable. 
One day, after Bobby had taken Whitey to the general store in town, banker Mallon's 10-year-old son, Richard, entered his father's office at the bank. Well, Richard, what brings you here? Right now, I'm pretty busy, and I... I want a dog. A dog all my own. A dog? Now, she here, Richard. No matter what I buy you, you soon tire of it. Anyway, I have plenty of dogs. They're the best money can buy. But you use them for your dog team. I want a dog of my own. Now, look, Richard, don't talk nonsense. I don't believe in making a pet of a dog. I'll uh, give you a dollar. I don't and... want a dollar. I want a dog. Why can't I have one? Why can't oh, I? stop that infernal whining. Oh, I don't care. I want you to buy me a dog. All right, all right. I'll get you a dog as soon as I find one worth buying. Now, go home. No, and... I don't want just any old dog. I want Whitey. Whitey? Whitey? What are you talking about? Bobby Small has a dog, a fluffy white dog, and his name is Whitey. And, and that's the dog I want. Now, be sensible, Richard. How can you have that dog if Bobby Small owns him? You can buy him for me. Ridiculous. I want Whitey. I don't want any other old dog, just Whitey. Bobby Small's poor, and he has Whitey, and we're rich. You can make him sell, Whitey. You can make him if you want to. If he doesn't <laughs> want to sell the dog, there's no way I can make him do it. So don't... Now, uh, look, son, you uh, you run along home and stop going into a tantrum. Maybe there is a way to get that dog for you after all. All right. But if I don't get Whitey, I'll... I'll go home and be patient. I, I think in a day or two you'll own the dog you want. I'll go home. Gosh, when I get him, I'll use a whip to make him learn tricks. I'll go home and wait you get Whitey for me like you promised. Goodbye, Dad. The next day, in response to a note from Banker Mallon, Bobby's father, Ned Small, went to the bank. As he seated himself in a chair across from Mr. Mallon, Ned spoke apologetically. I can guess why you sent for me, Mr. Mallon. My note is almost 30 days overdue. But I'm sure that in another month I'll be able to pay it in full. <coughs> I can't wait that long, Small. But on the due date, when I came to tell you payment would be delayed, you said it was all right. I'm sorry. But I have to demand payment at once. No. No, you can't do that. The claim's just beginning to pay off. I have a wife and boy, and I... No, I don't like to think of you losing your cabin and claim for so small an amount. Uh, perhaps there is a way to extend that note. Uh, what way? If there's any other way, you know I'd be... You, uh, you uh, own a dog, a white dog, don't you? Yes. Well... Not exactly. You see, my boy owns that white dog. But well, what's the dog got to do with the note? Hey, just this small. I'd be willing to extend that note if you'll turn over that white dog to me. No. No, that's impossible. It would break Bobby's heart to lose white. Well, I guess that's about all there is to say, small. I'll expect to see you in the morning with your answer. Good day to you, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Mallon. That evening, Bobby Small went to bed with Whitey curled up at his feet. His father had sent him to bed earlier than usual, and Bobby couldn't go to sleep. As he lay staring at the barren landscape beyond the window, he heard his father speak in the other room. Susie, I, I have something to tell you that I didn't want Bobby to hear. Now that he's sleeping, I'll talk it over with you. Well, what is it, Nick? I knew something was wrong when he came in. Mr. Mallon wants payment on that note in full. He wants it right away. And if it isn't paid, he's going to take over the cabin and the claim. Oh, no, he, he wouldn't. He would and he will. Oh, Ned, what are we going to do? He gave me only one way out. Unless, of course, we pay the money. What way is that? He's willing to take Whitey and extend the note. Take Whitey? Oh, no, Ned, we couldn't let him have Whitey. Why, the dog belongs to Bobby, and it would break the boy's heart to lose him. I know all that, honey. But, well, we're desperate. It's our only chance to save ourselves. Susie, I'll have to let Malin have way. And we'd better turn in and get some rest now. I have to go to town early in the morning. Whatever you say. Whitey, did you hear? They, they're going to give you away to that, that old rich banker. Oh, Whitey, I can't let him do it. I just can't. 
I'm not going to let them. I won't let you belong to someone else. As soon as I get dressed, I'll take you away. Then they won't give you away, I bet you. We'll get out through the window and go far away, Whitey. So that old Mr. Mallet can't ever take you away from me. Later that night, the town of Selkirk was startled by a muffled explosion. Within a few minutes, a crowd of men were in the street to see what had happened. Hey, what happened? Where was the explosion? Here comes Ted. Hey, hey, Ted, what happened? Where's the constable? Somebody just blew up the safe in the bank and got away. What? Yeah, there was two of them. I saw them riding off out the other end of town. Somebody find the constable while I tell Bank of Mallon. All right, get up, boys. Let's get after them. The following morning, Sergeant Preston and King stopped before the constable's office. Oh, Blackie, hold on. Steady. Come on, King. Well, Sergeant Preston and King. Hello, Tim. I'm sure glad to see you here right now, Sergeant. Huh? Something happened? Yes. The Selkirk Bank was robbed last night. They took about 20000 from the vault. That's bad news for Mellon. Yeah, he's having a fit. I tried to trail the two crooks. Someone saw two of them hightailing it out of town. But I lost the trail. I came back to see if I could pick up any clues around town as to their identity. Perhaps King and I can help. You sure can. King can follow their trail and maybe pick it up where I lost it. We'll do our best, Sergeant Jim. Preston. What? Gosh, I'm sure glad to see you in town. Well, hello, Ned. Sergeant, Bobby ran away last night. Bobby ran away? Well, why would he do that? Well, it, it's really my fault, I guess. You must have heard Susie and me talking about giving Whitey to bank a melon. Giving Whitey to bank a melon? Well, why do that? I gave that dog to Bobby. Don't you want him to have Whitey? Yes, yes, of course we do. He'd be brokenhearted without Whitey. But, well, Mallon holds a note for 300 wants it paid in full today. He offered to take Whitey and extend the note. Otherwise, he'll take our cabin and claim. Sergeant, please find my boy. He can keep Whitey no matter what happens. But you must find our boy. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice offer these three important things you're after in a ready-to-serve breakfast cereal. One, flavor. Swell, nut-like flavor. Two, crispness. Tender, melt-in-your-mouth crispness. Three, nourishment. Restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. What's more, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are the famous cereals shot from guns. Yes, huge guns are loaded with only the premium wheat or rice grain. Then these choice kingpin kernels are shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. Yes, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. They're puffed to perfection, shot through and through with bang-up nut-like flavor, too. Don't let anything hold you back. Get both delicious kinds, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Eat the wheat one day, rice the next. Remember, the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk, but comes only in the big Quaker red and blue package. Yes, these summer mornings, you'll love to eat Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Now to continue our story. After leaving his parents' cabin, Bobby Small, with Whitey at his side, headed along the trail south of Selkirk. The loneliness of the barren country was accentuated by the twilight of the Yukon night. And as Bobby trudged along, he tried to bolster his courage by talking to Whitey. We aren't afraid, are we, Whitey? <laughs> I bet your mom and dad will be sorry they were going to give you to Mr. Mallon when they wake up and find us gone, too. But I wish I could be with them. For a few moments, the boy and his dog moved slowly along the trail in silence. 
then coming to a tree stump alongside the trail bobby stopped and sat down whitey stood for a moment watching then moving close to bobby the dog put his head on the boy's lap and whined i i bet you miss him don't you whitey but we have to leave or they'll give you away i, I don't want to go away i want mom and daddy oh whitey i am afraid i am for a few moments bobby sat sobbing with his arms around his dog and then suddenly he sat up and listened somebody's come along the trail we better hide quick, Whitey, or they'll take you away from me. We'll hide behind this tree stump. <laughs> down, Whitey, down. Come on, come on. Here. <laughs> come on. Taking that gold from the bank vault was easy, Hank. We'll be a long ways away by morning. Yeah. We'll hit the white horse and make it through the pass to the stake. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it. behind that stump. Come out of there, you, you'll get a bullet. Oh, golly, Whitey, now you did it. We're coming out. Hey, look, Jake, a kid and a dog. Oh, oh, quiet, Whitey, quiet. What are you doing out here, kid? I'm running away, that's what. Running away, huh? Who are you running away from? Oh, from home, because my daddy was going to give my dog to Mr. Mallon, the banker. Are you robbers? I heard you say you took gold from the bank, boy. Hey, do you hear that, Hank? The kid overheard us talk. Yeah, what about it? You ain't afraid of a kid like him, are you? It isn't him I'm afraid of, you fool. But if someone gets on our trail and runs on to the kid, he'll tell him about us. Right. I didn't think of that. We better do away with him right now. Now, hold on. I don't go for murdering a kid. Anyhow, the Monty's never give up on a murder charge. No matter where you go, they finally get you. Yeah, we can take him along with us and drop him off a few miles outside of Whitehorse then. Before he gets there to tell him anything, we'll be on our way through the pass of Skagway. All right, that's better. Now, look, kid, we're going to help you run away, see? You can ride up here with me. No, I'm not going to ride with any bank robbers, so there. Ah, Fresh for its size, too. I'll get down and lift him up, too, you Hank. Steady, fella. All right, kid. What's up to that dog? You kidding? He's just an overgrown pup. Get out of my way, you mongrel. Now, come on. Get up there on the horse with Hank. No. Here, grab his hand, Hank. Yeah. Here he is. I don't want to go with you. I don't want to. Shut up and sit still. What about the dog, Jake? He can follow along behind. Steady, fella. All right, let's get going. Get up. Get up. Get up. Meantime, Sergeant Preston and King, with Ned Small and Jim, the constable, rode the trail toward Ned's cabin. You sure, Jim, that the two men you followed were the ones who robbed the bank? Well, I can't be positive, but men in town said the crooks rode this way and that there were two of them. No one could give a description. If they're the ones, they'll have the gold with them. But what about my boy? You've got to do something about finding him. I know how you feel, Ned. When we reach your cabin, Jim can stop there and try to pick up Bobby's trail. He can't have gone very far. You and Jim can hunt for Bobby while I go after the crooks with King. At the same time, I'll keep my eyes open for Bobby and his dog. Now let's hurry a bit. Come on, Blackie. Get, Get along there. there. Get After leaving Jim and Ned at the cabin, Sergeant Preston and King continued on to the point where the constable had lost the trail of the two horsemen. They had ridden into a shallow creek and had followed it for some time. But though the constable had been thrown off the trail, King wasn't easily fooled. Well, there, ho, buggy. All right, King, find them, fella. The intelligent dog stood sniffing the air a moment. The scent of the horses and men they had been following still clung to the bushes along the creek. And King, with a bark, started running along the bank, following the scent. Good boy, King. Come on, Blackie. A couple of miles farther on, King picked up the scent where the horseman had left the creek and turned back onto the trail. When Sergeant Preston and King reached the point where the crooks had caught up to Bobby and his pup, King stopped, sniffing the air and whining. Hold there, hold on. What is it, King? King recognized the scent of Bobby and the pup. Up to this point, the crooks had ridden a branch trail from the creek, so King hadn't picked up the boy's scent before. Now he tried to tell his master. Guess I don't understand, fella. Find them, King. After them, fella. Come on, Blackie. Having ridden all night, the crooks, Jake and Hank, had turned off the trail and made their way to a deserted prospector's shack back in the hills. They had tied Bobby's hands and feet. And then, with Whitey the pup inside with them, they had rested a few hours. It was afternoon when they were getting ready to push on. Jake, 
Well, you get our stuff together, I'll go out and get the horses saddled. All right, Hank. It's about time we got started. I won't be long. Hey, don't let that muck get away. I'll get him. Hey, come back here. Come back here. Here, boy, here, come here. Yeah, that darn dog's running up the hill behind the cabin. Must be chasing something. Jake will have to come out and help me. I... Hey, somebody riding up the trail. Matter. Rider coming up the trail. Looks like a money to me. What are we going to do, Jake? Wait, lift the cover of that big wood box in the corner. We hide the gold in there under a few logs. I'll go get it. Uh, hurry up, Jake. Uh, yeah. Here. Here's the gold. What about the kid? I hope it is a money. He'll take you to jail, I'll bet. Oh, he's already tied up. We'll gag him and put him in the wood box, too. It's big enough. Come on. No, no, I don't want to be put in the wood Shut box. Shut up, dear. It's bandana. I'll keep you quiet. No, no. Hey, he can't make any noise now. Grab his feet. I got him. Wait, let go a minute. Push the logs aside. We'll lay the kid in, cover him with that jute bag, and then put a few logs on top. Yeah. With the kid and the gold hit in there, there won't be any evidence against us. We can bluff out of it. Yeah. Now put him in. Yeah. There we are. I'll cover him and the gold with the jute bag. And... Yeah, here it is. Now the logs. Yeah. Think the kid'll smother in there? Oh, you have enough air. Now sit down at the table. We look like we're playing cards when that Mountie rides up. Don't look upset or surprised or nothing. Come on. All right, deal the cards out quick. All right. Door's still open. We'll just look unconcerned when he rides up. Yeah, he's got a dog with him. Yeah, they don't mean nothing. Here they come. Well, we got company, Jake. Come on. Hi there. I have some questions to ask you. Sure, go right ahead. I trailed you two from Selkirk. The bank was robbed there last night, as you might know. Your trail led from the bank. Well, that's natural. Hank and me had business at the bank before we set out on the trail. You mind if I search those saddlebags over there? Well, I'll go right ahead. Watch them, King. I guess you're barking up the wrong tree, Sergeant. You can't find anything to tie us in with that robbery. Well, there's nothing in your saddlebags. Who are you, and where are you heading? I'm Hank Miller. He's Jake Carver. We come through from Indian Creek. We're heading for a white horse. I see. Tell me, if you didn't rob the bank, why did you try to cover your trail by riding in the shallow creek? Oh, oh that. Oh, we figured it'd be a shortcut, that's all. Can't save any time by cutting across, across the muskeg. It's too treacherous. Creek bed is firm. Well, of course, that could be your reason for following the creek. Yeah, of course it could. King, it's a trouble, fella. The great dog, King, recognized the scent of Bobby Small. He went to the cot in the corner, then sniffed at the wood box. What's the matter, King? Hey, maybe it's because he got the scent of the animal that was in here. Just as we were riding toward the shack, a small bear or something beat it out the open door. Oh, well, that could be it. Here, King, never mind, fella. You got any more questions, Sergeant? Maybe I have made a mistake. Yeah. You know, Sergeant, you can't pin anything on us without proof. You can see the gold isn't hidden here anywhere, no place to hide it. That wood box might be a good place. Well, let's look in it, then. Hey, you see? Nothing but logs in there. Yes, you're right. You don't think we'd hide the gold in there if we had stolen it, do you? That's about the first place anyone would look. Yes, that's true. All right, close it up. Well, King, looks as though we... That pup, that's Bobby Small's dog. You wonder where that pup come from. Funny he'd be way out here alone. Sergeant Preston wasn't completely convinced, but he knew that without evidence, he had nothing to go on. He watched the pup Whitey as he ran to the cot whining. Then Whitey went to the wood box, and first sniffing strongly, the little dog began to bark and whine furiously. Then he began to scratch at the wood box. Hey, he caught that bear scent, too. Maybe. If there's something in that wood box right now that's excited that pup, I'll take another look. As Sergeant Preston started toward the wood box, Jake rose from his chair and quickly drew a gun. The Mountie's back was to him, and he was unaware of the danger. But the great dog, King, knew immediately there was danger in a pointed gun. And as Jake aimed at Preston's back, King sprang with a deep-throated growl. Don't take him off! Help! King, don't tell her. He's easy. Oh, you'll do a gun, eh? Yeah, he did, but yours won't do you any good. All right, Hank, take this and this. Watch him, King. Now I'll look in that wood box. One side, Whitey. Bobby Small. I'll put 
to on the cart, son. There. Now to take that gag out and untie you. That's got it. You all right, Bobby? Sergeant Preston, they put me in there. They're in the gold, too. They robbed the bank. Don't cry now, Bobby. You'll be all right. My boy, we were coming along the trail and heard the dogs barking. I see you caught the crooks. Yes, Jim, there they are. The gold's in that wood box. I tried to bluff out of it and almost succeeded. There's a reward for the capture posted by the bank. Five hundred dollars. Good. It will go to Bobby. You, you won't give Whitey away, will you, Daddy? Say you won't. No, no, of course not, son. Anyway, with that reward, we can pay the note so we can keep our cabin and claim and you can keep Whitey. Oh, golly. <laughs> Gee, Whitey, you're sort of a hero. And I'll always keep you. Of course you will, Bobby. You and Whitey are a fine pair. King led me here and saved me from a bullet. But Whitey led me to you in the gold. Gosh, I'm glad this is over. Catching those crooks and finding Bobby at the same time is wonderful. Makes everything turn out right for Susie and Bobby and me. Mm, yeah, and for Whitey, too, doesn't it, Whitey? Uh, <laughs> get this dog back, will you? All right, King. Let him up, boy. On your feet, Jake. You and Hank are headed for jail. This case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's adventure. Here's a taste treat you'll want to repeat. It's Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. These famous ready-to-serve breakfast cereals are actually shot from guns to make them bigger and better tasting. They've come back for more nut-like flavor. Come again, tender crispness. And they're good for you. Yes, Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat are a real treat these summer days and so easy to serve. Make sure to have a good supply of both delicious kinds on hand at all times. Eat the wheat one day, rice the next. That's the original crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Never sold in bags or bulk. Always buy the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of the uphill sled. It all began when King and I found a beautiful girl trying to revive an unconscious man on the trail. We found out that the man had been beaten up on orders of a ruthless mine owner. In trying to block his crooked plans, King and I nearly became the victims of a cleverly planned explosion at midnight. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Wednesday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Good news for dog owners. You can now get the famous Kennel Bar dog feeding bowl for just one dollar and four kennel ration labels. Compares with bowls worth up to three dollars and fifty cents value. This heavy gauge plastic bowl is 15 inches long, serves water and food separately, won't tip over, and it's easy to clean. Get your valuable Kennel Bar dog feeding bowl today. Your dealer has your mailing coupon. Or send your dollar and four Kennel Ration labels to Kennel Ration, Chicago 77. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. The Challenge of the Yukon will be heard next Wednesday and every Wednesday until September when we will resume our regular Monday, Wednesday, and Friday broadcast.